saying last time about frustration, when you get frustrated, put on a good song. It helps a lot. I took a pretty tough computer science course back about 20 years ago, and Madonna got me through that class, um, the Immaculate Collection. Good stuff. Uh, we play that on Friday. So today we're going to um, take a break from polymorphism, which we'll come back to again. Um, again, we're going to see this multiple times, different contexts, give you guys a chance to absorb it over as long a time interval as we have. But today I want to talk about something new and something that's going to clarify some of the ways that we've been working with objects in Java. So we're going to talk about object references. We're going to talk about what the variables that store our objects actually store. And this is an important, really important concept for understanding not just how Java works, but references are a big idea that occur all over the place in computer science. So, you know, the idea of a reference, what that is, how we use it, um, this doesn't just come up in Java, this comes up everywhere. Python has them, uh, networking, uh, you know, toolkits have them. This is a really powerful idea. Operating systems use them in various ways. So again, this, this idea of a reference really pervades computer science. It's probably one of the big ideas in the field. And so we're going to see it today in the context of Java, and it's going to actually help us understand some of what's been going on with our code. This example, for one. And then we'll come back to polymorphism on Friday, and this actually will help polymorphism make a little bit more sense. All right, so this is just what I said, right? So basically today we're going to have object references, and then on Friday we'll go back, we'll talk about polymorphism more, because once you understand the idea of a reference variable, which are all the various bulbs that we've been using to store objects, polymorphism will make more, more sense, I promise. Okay, so let's start off by looking at this little snippet of code here. All right, up at the top of my example here, I'll pull this down. And so essentially today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about why there's a difference between these two little chunks of code, okay? So I've created a person class with the name, and I have a setter or getter for the name. Sorry, I have a, a person class, I have a constructor, and I have a two-string uh, function. So just a little class to use for fun. And now down in my main method, I'm going to look at two different pieces of code. All right, so this sort of goes back to the beginning of class when we talked about primitive types. So the block of code that starts on line 13, I create a variable called first, and I initialize it to zero. That happens on line 13. And then I create a variable, declare a variable called second. These are both ints. And I assign it to the value of first. Then on line 15, I change the value of second to a different value, and now I'm going to print off both of these uh, numbers. You might think about what you expect to happen there. So first initially had a value of zero. When I created second, I copied the value from first. Now I change second to something different and print the two. Now the block of code that starts on line 19 or line 18 looks on some level quite similar. But it behaves very differently. Okay, so let's walk through this. So now I'm using object um, variables. I'm creating a new person on the right side of this line, and I'm assigning it into a variable of type person named me. And now, again, this is intended to look very similar to this. Right? I create a new person variable called you, and I assign it to me. Again, that assignment there is what we're going to have to think about more as today's uh, class goes on. Now I change the name of you. Okay, so again, this is designed to look very similar. I changed the name of you to student. When I initialized you, I set your name Jeff. And now I'm going to print both me and you. Both me and you have a two-string method defined in the class. I also made the name public so that I can change it this way. Okay, so let's run this code see what happens, and then think about it. Okay. So what is surprising about this? So up here, when I changed second, did that change have any effect on the value of first? No, because 
when I printed them, first was still zero. Now down here, when I changed the name of u, did that effect have any effect on the variable me? It does. So now, me started off with the name Jeff, and now when I print both of these, it looks like both of these variables now have the same name. So this is confusing, this is new, okay? And this is again, our chance to be a lot more specific about what's happening here and what happens when we use objects in Java, specifically when we have variables that store objects in Java. So up until this point, we haven't been specific about what we've been talking about when we talk about object variables. I've been, I've been thinking about this every time I say it, but I've been trying to say things like, you know, the variable you, the variable person, sorry, the variable me is of type person and it stores a person. But that's actually not correct. And so from this point forward, I'm gonna be trying to be more clear about this because what a variable that stores an object in Java actually stores is something called a reference. These are sometimes known as reference variables. What is a reference? A reference is a value that allows a program to access another value. It refers to the other value. It is not the thing it refers to. It is a reference. And again, th this is a slippery concept. Um, let's, let me go forward here a couple of slides and we'll talk about some real world examples. So there's a difference between a reference and the actual object that it refers to. So can anybody give me some examples here? Think about real world examples of a reference. Yeah. A phone number, exactly, right? So a phone number is not the phone, right? The phone number is a reference that allows you, if I give you my phone number, or if you give somebody else your phone number, to refer to the phone. The reference is not the phone. You can copy your phone number onto 10 different pieces of paper and give it to 10 different people and you haven't copied the phone. You still only have one phone. That's the same phone that's gonna ring anytime anybody uses that reference to refer to your phone. Okay, so that's a good one. What else? Another example, yeah. Uh, a name, okay, so a name specifically refers to you. That's true, right, exactly. Yeah, a name refers to you. It's a good point, it's a label, right? Um, if I write down the name and, and uh, your name and hand it out to a bunch of people, um, that allows the, them to, they could come into this auditorium, they could say, I'm looking for so, such and such a person, you could raise your hand and they could find you, right? What else? Yeah. What's that? Okay, so you guys are, these are more sort of identifiers, right? But what's, you know, uh, what's, what's an example of again, a reference? This is something that's used to get something, yeah. What's that? Okay, yeah, that's a good point. So the shortcuts that you create on your desktop, those are references, right? You can make as many of them as you want. They all lead to the same thing, right? So phone number's a good example. A street address, right? I like this one because this, I think, makes it really clear that it's not the house. That, so I could write down my address and give it to a bunch of you. Yeah, because you guys could use that to find my house. And then there's another important thing about this analogy that I want you to think about. If one of you uses, for example, my home address, you look it up in Google and you find where I live and you map yourself over there and you like throw tomatoes at my house or something like that, right? The next person that comes along is gonna see that, right? Because you guys are referring to one object. I only have one house. So any of you that use my address can make changes to the house, please don't, that will be visible to everybody else. So this is similar to Java objects when we talk about references. When we use a reference variable to access a Java object and make changes to it, those changes are visible to anybody else who has a reference, okay? Let's go, we'll come back and do these other two in a second. Sorry, I'm jumping around here, right? So from this point forward, we're gonna to refer to a variable that stores an object as a reference variable. And the reason for that is because it actually doesn't store the object. It stores a reference to the object, okay? So for example, on line six, 
what am I doing here? I'm declaring a variable called me that can store a reference to something that is of type person. So this variable can store a reference to a person object. It does not store a reference to a person yet, okay? It's just, I'm just declaring it. I can also initialize it to have this special value called null. So now maybe this helps make null make a little bit more sense. Null is an empty reference. Null is a value that indicates that a reference doesn't refer to anything. And this is one of the reasons it makes it so dangerous. So let's say that, you know, again, your friend said, hey, come over to my house, and they wrote down their address on a piece of paper. When they gave it to you, it was blank, right? They wrote it in, like, white pen or something like that, right? That's a null reference. You can't follow that reference, right? If you try to find your way to that house, you're going to get in trouble. I mean, you're not going to throw a nice error like we see um, when we try to run our code, but that's the idea, right? You were expecting a reference. What you found was nothing. So you can't use that to do anything useful. You can't go over and hang out and watch the, watch the game or whatever. Um, so these variables that store objects in Java really store object references. So now I've initialized this to store null. This is an empty reference. I can do that. Here, I'm changing the value of me to refer to a new person object that I've created on the right side. But just like when we thought about how we do assignment with primitive types, this works the same way. I, when I do assignment, I want to think from right to left. I create a new person on the right side of this expression, and then I change the value of the reference variable me to refer to that person. So now I have a reference to that new object I just created of type person, and I can use that reference to do things like access the fields or the methods that that class declares. Okay, so we're going, I, I know that this is small, I'm hoping you guys are following along in front of you so that you can see more clearly, because this is, this is important. Okay, so up here, you might have seen, I declared two different reference variables. One called me, and another called you. On line 15, I copy the reference from me into you. Now, this is where people get confused. I have some diagrams later that I hope will help with this, but let's try to build up a mental model first. When you copy a reference variable in Java, like this, you do not copy the object. If you want to think about how many person objects there are in the program at this point, there is one way to do that, and that's look for the new keyword. If you don't see new, there's no new person. I have created one person on line 14. Initially, I saved a reference to that person in the me variable. Now I'm copying the reference into the you variable. So again, I created a new house, and I copied the address down into the me variable. And now I'm copying the address of the house into this you variable. I didn't create, it, I didn't create any more houses. I didn't create any more person objects. There's only one call to new here. But now I have two references to the same person object. So either I can make changes to that person object by either using you or me. They refer to the same thing. So the two phone numbers, they're both going to ring the same phone. Two addresses, they're both going to lead you to the same location. If I now, OK, there's a lot of things that are going to start making sense after today, I hope. So remember when we compared strings? When we compared objects, I told you not to do this. Whenever we compare variables that store objects, we don't use the double equality operator in Java. This is, this is kind of a stupid thing about Java, I'll just say it, um, because this should work, but it doesn't. Why don't we do this? Because this compares the value of the references. This does not compare whether the two objects are the same. This says, do both of these variables store a reference to the same object? So this is only true if literally you and me refer to the same object. Right? So this is only true if I have two variables that have a reference to the same object. We assume that an object is equal to itself. OK. And then now, on line 17, I'm taking 
the reference variable u that stores a reference to a person object, and I'm changing it to refer to a new person. So now, at this point in the program, I have two person objects. I have the one that I created on line 14, and I have this one that I just added on line 17. I have a reference to one of them stored in the reference variable me, and I have a reference to the second one stored in the reference variable you. Now when I try to print off whether or not these two are the, referred to the same object, that's going to print false, okay? So let's, let's play with this in our, in our little playground here. So work, that's fine. Um, so again, now, um, and I just, I just walked through this, so I'm not gonna do it again. So initially these two reference variables are the same. After I change the reference variable u to refer to this new person, now they're not at the bottom. So when I use double equality to compare the values of two reference variables, so any variable that stores a reference to an object, there's only one way to store object uh, values in Java, and that's to use a reference variable. So anytime you're working with objects, you're using reference variables. We haven't been calling them reference variables, but today we're gonna start, because that's what they are. They don't store the object. They store a reference to the object. Questions about this? Before we go on, and I'll explain this again in several other ways, but any questions right at the top? So again, this is, this is hopefully gonna clear up several things that we've been talking about, right? Um, the use of null, right? So null is a way of, again, setting, saying that a reference variable does not store a reference. So if I try to do anything with that, that requires referring to an actual object, like calling an object method, or setting one of the object properties, it's going to fail, it's gonna crash. Okay, so we talked and again, let's go back and we'll go through the real world analogies again. This is the most important thing to understand. A reference is not an object. There's the object and the references that I store that lead me to that thing. So again, one phone, multiple copies of the phone number. You can even have two phone numbers that ring the same phone, right? That's possible. So again, the phone number is not the phone. The phone number is a reference. That reference is um, maintained by the phone company. So when you call a phone number, you stick in the reference, and the phone company does this, sort of uh, looks up this information that they have stored somewhere that says, okay, you know, what device should I ring when somebody calls this number? And then it finds, figures out what to sell the device in, if it's a cell phone or whatever, and, and then that device starts to ring, right? This is a reference, okay? Street address, same thing. Your address, it's not your house. You can make lots of copies of your address, and the house is, you still only have one house. Changes that I make based on um, accessing a reference are visible to everybody else, because there's only one object. So if I hire a company to paint my house, and I give them my address, and they come and they paint the house purple, and then I hire another company to come and you know, cut the lawn or whatever, then when the second company shows up to cut the lawn, the house is purple. Right? Or if the, you know, if the painters show up second, the yard is mowed, right? So any changes that people uh, make to an object based on a reference are visible to everybody who has a reference to that object, okay? Social security number, you guys brought up several other good examples of this ID numbers, again, these refer to people. So second thing to understand about references is that copying a reference does not copy the thing it refers to. Right? So when I copy a reference, I don't get a copy of the object. Right? If I copy my address, it doesn't copy my house. I wish, that'd be a nice way to create new houses. Um, so again, copying a phone number doesn't copy the phone. Copying a street address doesn't copy that location. Right? These are copying references. Right? There's still only one place. Uh, copying a social security number doesn't copy the person. Um, don't copy social security numbers, that'll get you in a lot of trouble. Um, Okay, so, and, and again, let's, let's look at this, right? And, and we're gonna see, this is sort of the example pulled out from, that we started with today. Let's walk through this. So I have a person class with a public age. Normally we wouldn't do that, but just for the sake of example, we have a public field. 
I create a reference variable called person on line four. That variable can store references to objects of type person. I set that variable to be the new person object that's created on line five. Now I create another reference variable. So remember, I have not copied the person. There's still only one person object in this snippet. If you get confused about the differences between variables and the objects that they refer to, keep in mind, objects only get created in Java when you see new. Okay, this is true for everything except strings. But basically every type of object, if you don't see new, there's no new object being created. There is only one object that is created in the snippet of code. There are two different variables, but both of them, by the time I get to line seven, both of them refer to the same object. And so when I use me to change my age to 40, you also refers to the same object. And so when I use you to print the age of that object, even if the age was initialized to zero, by the time I get to line eight, the age has been changed to 40. All right, so let's, I think I have a diagram for this. Ah, I do, sweet, okay. So now we'll look at this sort of pictorially because this hopefully will help, you know, clarify some of these things. I'm trying to explain this a couple of different ways. This is, like I said, a very, very powerful and ubiquitous concept in computer science. All right, so here's, we're gonna go line by line here, right? So here's what things look like after line four executes. I have created a reference variable, me, but it doesn't actually store anything yet. It's null. So if I tried to access any of the fields or methods, I would, this would be a runtime error, okay? Once I assign me to refer to the result of creating a new person object, now I have the person object over here and the reference variable me, and I'm showing that reference relationship using an error, right? So me refers to the person object that I just created. So when I create an object using new, I then assign a reference to that object to whatever's on the left side of the expression, which is usually a, a variable that I'm declaring, or just changing the value, okay. Now, this is what the world looks like. So I've created a new person reference variable called you, and I've copied the reference from me to you. So again, at this point in my program, I have one object, I have two reference variables that refer to that one object, right? So regardless of whether I start with me or whether I start with you, they are leading me to the same place. So now here, when I use me to change the age of the person object, there's only one person object, right? So the person, you know, a minute ago had age zero, now has age 40. When I use you to retrieve the age, it's accessing the same object. All right, questions at this point? This makes perfect sense to everybody. I doubt that very much. Maybe you guys just don't know what to ask yet. That's okay. Yeah. So the question is, what's the purpose of, of why do we have reference variables in the first place? Yeah, I'll show you in a sec, right? There, there's, a, there's a number of ways in which reference variables turn out to be extremely, extremely powerful, right? Uh, rather than just having the variable store the object, right? The question is, why do I have reference variables? So we'll come back to that, yeah. They have the same effect, yeah, yeah. When you, so the question is, What's the difference between, um, let me go back to the previous slide, like this line versus just having to be null? There, there is none, right? they, they do the same thing. In certain cases though, Java is smart enough that it'll actually check your code for you. If you don't ever initialize the value of a reference variable, it will complain. It'll say, you know, this variable can't be anything other than null. Yeah, so this line four, and this are the same, have the same effect. Great question, other questions? Yeah. Um, 
One more time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so the question is, you know, if, if, and, and I'll, I'll, just, I'll just try to answer this more generally. If I'm looking at a piece of code, you know, what constitutes creating an object versus a reference to an object? So remember, look for new. When you see new, that means that there's a new object being created. Now, whenever we create an object, almost always, we also save a reference to it into a variable, because otherwise, what, what's it for, right? Um, so usually whenever I create, that's like building a house, but never telling anybody where it was, right? Like if I built a whole beautiful subdivision with new homes, but I never gave them addresses, and so no one could ever find them, it'd be hard to live there, right? So normally, whenever we create an object, we're assigning, we're saving a reference to it somewhere, into a variable that can, that can store a reference. But in, unless you see new, there is no object being created. When you see new, there is an object being created. It's right. a good question. Okay. Same. So now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. All right. Let's say I want to swap references. This actually comes back to your question. So. References are not the objects that they refer to, but without a reference, I can't refer to an object at all. So if Java, if, if your code gets to the point where you don't have a reference to an object, it's gone. It might as well not exist at that point. And in fact, we'll talk about this a little bit later, Java will actually take care of making it not exist. Hey, guys in the back, excuse me, you two, can you just stop talking constantly throughout class? I mean, I can hear you, and I assume that the people around you can hear you as well. So, thanks. All right, so if I lose a reference to an object, don't have it anymore, then Java eventually is gonna take that object and destroy it, right? Again, this is like if you built a house, you handed out some addresses to people, but then over time, they lost them. And so nobody can find their way there anymore. That house might as well not exist. Nobody can locate it. It's like a phone without a phone number. It's not gonna be very useful, nobody can call you. All right, so when we swap these two, we have to be careful to do this in a way that makes sure that we always have a reference to every object that we still want to keep around. So when I'm done, what I want is I want me to refer to the person with age 18, that'd be fantastic, and I want you to refer to the person with age 40, you probably wouldn't like that very much. Um, so the trick to doing this is I need a temporary reference variable. So again, this is, um, so here I'm created a third reference variable. It is, I've not created a new object. There's still only two objects. But what I'm doing is I'm temporarily saving an extra reference to the person with age 40. I do that by copying the reference variable from me into this temporary variable. So at this point in the program, I have two references to the person with age 40. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reassign me to now hold the value of you. So now I have two references to the person with age 18. I've done half the job I wanted to do. I wanted me to refer to a, the person with age 18. I wanted you to refer to the person with age 40. I have to finish the job. The way I do that is I use that temporary reference variable. Yeah, question in the back. You can't. Yeah, so the question was, can I do this without the extra temporary variable? The answer is no. I cannot swap these two uh, because uh, as soon, and, and we can try this, right? But as soon as I lose, if, if I ever get to the point where an object has no references to it, it's gone. Never get it back, right? Again, think, think about this from the perspective of some of the real world references we talked about, right? Um, once I don't have, once a phone doesn't have a phone number, it might as well not exist. It's never going to ring. Yeah. 
Ah, okay. So let's, let's walk this, the great question, right? So let's walk through this again. Okay, so here I created a new person with age 40, and I saved a reference to it in this variable me. Here I created a new person with age 18, and I created, saved a reference to it in this variable you. When I copy the values of reference variables, uh, doesn't, you know, so it doesn't change, so I think the question was at this point? Yeah. So, me, so whenever I copy these, and th these, th these are assignments, right? So let's just go through this one by one. I take the reference that's in me and I copy it into a new variable called temp. So now I have two references to the person with age 40. Now I set me equal to you. So I take the reference that was stored in you and I copy it into me. I've changed me. I didn't change temp, I didn't change anything else, right? You can think of this as whatever that reference is, however Java uh, stores it, um, it's copied from one variable to another. So whatever you referred to, me now refers to. Whenever you do something like this in Java, when you have two objects, you now have two references to the same thing. Me and you now refer to the same variable, right? When I did this here, temp and me referred to the same object. Now after this point, me and you refer to the same object. Me no longer refers to the same object as temp because I changed the value of me. I did not change the value of temp. And that's actually really important because if I change the value of temp, I would no longer have a reference to the person with age 40. Last step, u is equal to temp. So now again, I'm copying these two are gonna refer to the same variable and they're gonna refer to whatever temp referred to. So temp referred to the person with age 40, u now refers to the person with age 40. Did that answer your question? I think I just sort of explained it again, but, but this, is the, this is the core thing to wrap your mind around here, right? Is that changing a reference, two things, changing a reference doesn't change the object, and changing a reference variable doesn't change other reference variables, right? So anytime you look at one of these assignments, the only value that's gonna change here is the reference stored by you. Temp's not gonna change, me's not gonna change, right? U is going to receive whatever the value that was the reference that was stored in temp. And at this point, this extra variable that I created to solve this problem is no longer needed, and so it can just go away. Right? This will happen naturally. I don't have to delete it, but I don't need to use it anymore. Right? I only created it to, to do this temporary swap. Other questions here? This is a good, again, this is a good example to work through return to, to make sure that you master this concept. Yeah. Yeah, I don't wanna to go too far into that right now. So the question is, if I lose a reference to an object, does it mean it's deleted? Yes. At some point, yes. Not immediately. So Java, you, you, you might, if, if, now Python does the same thing, but some of you that might've learned some other languages in the past may have wondered you know, I have a way to create objects. Why don't I have a way to delete them? What if I want to get rid of that object? Um, it's taking up space, I don't need it anymore. So in Java, the way this is done is when there are no more references to an object, Java will destroy it for you. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because when there's no more references to something, it can't be used, right? Again, like if there's, imagine there's a house in a forest somewhere. This is probably true right? Somewhere, you guys should go hunt around on Google Maps. Like, somewhere, there's probably some house that someone built, and then, you know, they died, and it's been hundreds of years, and nobody knows how to get there anymore. It's just hanging out, right? If, if you went and destroyed that house, don't do that, right? But you could, like, paint it or fix it up or whatever. Um, nobody would know. Like, no one knows where that is, right? So it might as well not exist. In fact, it doesn't exist, right? From our perspective, because the only things that exist are things that we can find our way to, right? Same thing with Java. Once you have an object that has no references, it's gone. And it's safe to do that because you can't find it again, right? I thought I had an example. So, okay, well we can try this one without doing the reference swap. So now let's run this code and see what happens. This is just the example that we did. You are now 40, sorry about that. It's not so bad, actually. Um, okay, so let's try doing 
this. Let's not create the temporary variable. Let's try to, so this is, this sort of looks like it should work, right? Um, what's gonna happen here? Let's think about it. So, I have two reference variables, one called me, one called you. When I start on line seven, I initialize the reference variable me to refer to a new person that has age 40. Then when I initialize the reference variable you to a new person with age 18 on line eight, now I set me equal to you. So now how many references do I have to the person with age 18? Two. How many references do I have to the person with age 40? Zero. And so now what happens on line 10? You, is, you now refers to the person with age 18. So does me. So this line has no effect. All right, I might as well get rid of it. And you may think that you've just saved yourself. You're still 18. But at this point, there is no way to get at the person with age 40. In fact, once I, I don't even have to run line 10. Once I run line 9, there is no way to refer to that person that had age 40. That object has no references to it. And so it's, it's gone. It's going to be deleted, but it doesn't really matter because you can't use it, right? I could create a new person with age 40, um, but the person that I created on line seven is no longer accessible. Questions about this? A good. Actually, let's, let's put in another print statement at the end so we make sure that we believe that you and me are the same. We'll say me.age. But see, this is what's good about it because I'm also 18, so I'll take that. Um, now let's say me.age is equal to 40, and you'll see both me and you reflect the change I made to the age because they refer to the same object. So it doesn't matter which object I use here on line 12. If I use you, the code runs the same. Yeah. Because these refer to the same object. There's only one person object left in my program after I run line 9. Question. Questions, concerns, worries. Okay, good. Um, so someone asked before, why? Why do I do this? Why use these references at all? Why not just have the object store the variables that they refer to? One of the reasons is this. So in Java, when you call a method and you pass it a, an object and it receives a parameter that's an object, what it receives is a reference to that object, okay? So let's look at this little code. I have a person with an age, and then I have this instance method called birthday. Um, this is, well, sorry, this is my class. I have this little method. It's not an instance method. It's actually not inside the class. It's outside the class. So this birthday method takes a person, but now we know that this is a reference variable. So inside this function, if I change the age of the person, which is what I do, I increment it and then I return their new age, I've modified whatever object you passed me. So here, how many person objects are there in my system? One. I see new once. I initialize that person object to have an age of 39. Then I pass a reference to it to this function. Okay, the function has a copy of a reference to that object that it, you, that it calls to set. It increments the age of to set, returns that. When I go down here and print the age of this object now, the object that I created, right, on line 11, what we're gonna find is that the birthday function has modified it, right? So now let's walk through what this, what this looks like, okay? So when I run, the line of code on line 11, I have created a reference variable, me, that stores a reference to something of type person, 
and I initialized it to refer to a new person object that I created on the right side of the assignment. So again, there is a new person object in the system because I see new. I also have a variable that stores a reference to that person. Once I call, when I call birthday, when birthday runs, what happens is while birthday, the birthday function is running, while I'm waiting for it to finish, there are two references to this person. So when I call birthday, I make a copy of the reference that I have. Birthday refers to that as two set, but they refer to the same object. Birthday is gonna increment the age, and so when I get back on line 13, the age that's visible to me on this one object is now 40. It's modified by birthday. So this allows, uh, object references allow me to write methods that modify the objects that they're passed. So they can do things like change the values of variables or whatever, right? And then the person that called the method gets an object back that's modified, right? The object that was passed could have been changed by that function, right? So again, we can run this code just to convince ourselves that it works. Um, I'll just get, I don't need to actually print that twice, I'll just print it once. I call birthday and then when I get the object back, its age has been modified. I'll put a, so again, before I call birthday, the age of that person is 40, um, but it's the same Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so I think I actually have some slides on final coming up here. Is that true? Um, yeah, but that's on class design. Yeah, so, so the question was, why does check, this is a check style rule, right? Why does check style um, require that you set your parameters to be final, right? And actually, this is a great point to ask this question. So let me show you something. What do you think is going to happen now? Let's do um, to set is equal to new person 50. And then we'll just return, we need to return an, an age. Okay. So now what do you think is going to happen? Let's think it through. Okay. So, I got a copy of a reference to the person object that was created by the main function on line 13. But it's a reference. So when I change to set, do you think that's gonna change me? Let's find out. Nope. So if I take a reference that's a copy of another reference. So essentially, while birthday runs, main has a reference called me that refers to that object that it created on line 13. Birthday gets a copy of that reference, but if birthday creates a new object and changes its copy, it doesn't change me, okay? If you could do this, and you can do this in some other languages in certain ways, it becomes really hard to reason about how your code works because it's like I pass you an object called me and when I get back, who knows, right? So what happens is, and I wish I had slides for this, but I don't, diagram. When birthday runs, well actually, let's go back to the diagram we had here, right? Where'd it go? Okay, so now what's happening is I'm actually creating a new person and I'm setting new, to set to refer to that new person, but when the, birthday function returns, this two set variable is destroyed. And along with it, that new object that I created. So this is why check style requires that those parameters be final. Because changing them does not do what people typically think that it does. This is a common programming mistake, is that I think that by changing the reference that two set refers to, I'm somehow gonna change the reference that I was passed. That's not how it works. I get a copy of that reference. I can do anything I want to my copy, but 
I can't change the reference that was passed, right? So there's no way for the birthday function to modify me, the variable that was, the, the reference stored in me that was initialized by the call. Yes, this is a great question. Next semester, I'll put together some slides on that because that's useful. Okay. Okay, so now let's, let's extend this a little bit, right? We're gonna talk about arrays. So arrays in Java store references to objects. If I create an array of, in this case, person, if I create an array of persons, people, on line seven, what I'm creating is an array that can hold references to person objects. So let's walk through this, and this is, again, one of these examples that we put in front of you because if you can understand how this works and reason about it, you're starting to grasp how references work. So this block of code creates an array called people that can store four person references. It then goes through that array and creates some new person objects. So how many person objects have I created when I get to line 11? And think about how many times is new called? Four. Size of this is four. I, the for loop, good review, for loops goes through the array. And every time this for loop runs, it creates a new person object and it saves references to those persons, should use a different word, it's weird to talk about persons, but I'm trying to use that rather than people, um, into the array called people. So I've created four person objects at this point. Now let's look at what happens down here. So this is interesting. Now I create another array of size four that can store four more references to person objects. I then go through and I copy the references from my array called people into my array called same people. So how many people objects have I created here? When I get down to line 15, how many people, how many person objects have been created by this program? Four. The same, I haven't created any more person objects in this loop because you don't see new, all right? What I did is I copied the references. So, and this is where I get to try to do my fancy finger diagram that never works out very well. So I had one array that had four references to person objects, and now I create a second array that has four more references to the same person objects. So there's four person objects in my system that were created in the first loop. All the second loop did was create a new array but it set the references to the same person objects created that were stored in the first array. Now I go through my first array and I increment everybody's age. And so the question is, what happens when I go through my same people array, the second array I created, and print everybody's age down at the bottom, okay? So let's try it. See what happens, there you go. So, remember, well, there are only four person objects in this program. When I initialized them, they had ages 18, 19, 20, and 21. The loop that starts at line 14 doesn't make copies of those person objects, it makes copies of the references. So now I have eight references that refer to four objects. For every object, I have two different references. One stored in people, the other stored in same people. Now I go through my people array, array and I add 10 to everybody's age. And then I go through my same people array and I print everybody's age. And the idea is the same people stores references to the same objects stored in people and so it reflects the changes that I made on, in the loop that starts on line 17. All right, so this is a good stopping point for today. I have a couple of announcements. The first one's kind of important, so, you know, just co basic common sense, right? If you guys are sick, don't come to class. Don't come to lab. Um, if we need to, we will adjust the number of excused absences this semester to account for any, you know, unforeseen events that might uh, happen in the future. But please, on behalf of myself and all your classmates, don't come to class if you're sick. Do start MP2. It's due a week from today or tomorrow, depending on your deadline day, before spring break. 
Um, I have office hours today at 4. Hope to see a few of you then. See you on Friday. Good luck on the quiz. <laughs>